Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In today's video, we're going to be discussing some exciting Harry Potter news. That's right, just earlier today, we got the second official trailer for the upcoming Fantastic Beasts film, Fantastic Beasts 3 The Secrets of Dumbledore. We were supposed to get the trailer on the 24th, not sure what happened there, but that's not important anymore. What's important is that it's here. If you haven't seen the trailer yet, I've got it posted on my channel, so go watch that first. But if you have seen it, which I'm assuming you have if you're here, stay right here because I'm going to be doing a trailer breakdown. This is perhaps the most comprehensive trailer so far, and I won't keep you waiting any longer. Let's dive in. Memory is everything. That's the first line we're hit with as a rendition of the iconic Hedwig's theme plays in the background. It's Dumbledore's voice. We see Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Then we see Dumbledore staring into his pensive, magical artifact used to review and store memories. What aspects of his past is Dumbledore looking at? Without it, we leave the fate of our world to chance, Dumbledore continues, and the trailer cuts to a young Dumbledore looking rather anxious. Next we see a young woman, it looks to be a young Minerva McGonagall, at Dumbledore's doorstep, telling him, I'm sorry to disturb you, Albus, but I've just received troubling news. Tell me, what is it? Dumbledore replies. It's Grindelwald. The trailer then shifts to a shot of Grindelwald's castle, Nurmengard, which is located in the Austrian Alps. Nurmengard was used by Grindelwald to hold prisoners, as well as serve as base of operations for him and his followers. Next we see Grindelwald himself, in deep thought. Next we see Credence, sporting his new long hair, being paid a visit from a phoenix. We don't know for sure yet, but I think that this phoenix is probably Fawkes. The pair appear to have a close relationship. The time is close, my brothers and sisters, we hear Grindelwald say, as we see Newt walking up to some kind of rally. I know that the film is set somewhere in Bhutan, a landlocked country in the eastern Himalayas located between China and India, so I'd be willing to bet that this is where Newt is here, as topographically it would make sense. Newt looks pretty concerned here, so I'm positive this is some kind of Grindelwald campaign rally. Our war with the Muggles begins today, Grindelwald enthusiastically shouts out to the crowd, prompting witches and wizards to cheer and fire their wands into the air. The spells being fired into the air also appear to create some sort of green pattern, one which I happen to know something about. This is a logo for The Alliance, an association of seditious witches and wizards who followed Gellert Grindelwald in the early 20th century. The fanatics dedicated to Grindelwald's ideology of wizarding supremacy referred to themselves as his acolytes, but it's important to note that many young and idealistic witches and wizards were taken in by Grindelwald's charisma, not truly understanding the ramifications of their actions. The main goal of the Alliance was to expose the world wizarding community and provoke a war with non-magic people, with intent to overturn the international statute of wizarding secrecy and force the non-magical population into slavery under their motto, For the Greater Good. The world as we know it is coming undone, says Dumbledore, as we see Grindelwald extracting memories, or at least I think that's what he's doing, from the head of Yusuf Karma. I say this because it looks identical to when Slughorn's memories were taken from his head in the Half-Blood Prince. If we're to defeat him, you have to trust me, says Dumbledore, as we witness Dumbledore defending against some kind of a spell fired at him by Credence. Next we see Jacob walking towards his bakery and away from Eulalie Hicks, a new protagonist that we've only seen a small amount so far. Eulalie makes a brief cameo in Fantastic Beasts The Crimes of Grindelwald, when she converses with Nicola Flamel via his magic book, but that role wasn't very big, and reportedly Eulalie is going to have a much more significant role in the upcoming film. Jacob appears to be walking away from Eulalie with his tail between his legs, stating, I want out. I guess everything has become far too much for him to cope. Yulali, on the other hand, isn't having any of it, stating, Mr. Kowalski, we need you. Jacob is a nomad, right? How could he possibly be of pivotal importance when it comes to defeating Grindelwald? I guess we'll find out. Next, we see something truly bizarre on what appears to be a train. Newt saying to Jacob, Dumbledore asked that I give you something, right before pulling out a wand and handing it to him. I really don't know what this means for Jacob's character, as a wand is useless in the hands of a true muggle. Does this mean that Jacob has nascent magical ability? Is he a squib? Also, whose wand is this? Is it Grindelwald's old wand? I actually made a full video on Jacob possessing the wand, which I'll link in the description. This is the team that's going to take down the most dangerous dark wizard in over a century, is the next line we're delivered as we're given quick cuts of various scenes. 
First, Newt, Jacob, and Eulali walking hurriedly through a hallway before being stopped in their tracks by some kind of magical door. And next, we see Grindelwald and his acolytes standing in formation, Queenie included. What's interesting about this group is that Yusuf Karma also appears to be there, and he's one of the good guys, right? I'm willing to bet here that Grindelwald has extracted Yusuf's good memories, perhaps via Obliviate, and used the Imperious Curse on him, putting him entirely under his control. Unforgivable curses don't apply to dark wizards like Grindelwald. Or maybe, but less likely, Yusuf Karma isn't so good after all. Who wouldn't like our chances, we hear, as Jacob giggles in the train. Next up, we see who has been revealed to be a young Aberforth Dumbledore staring into a mirror as words begin to form. Though the sentence is incomplete, we're given a little bit of it. Do you know is the clear part, but from there it gets a little messy. I can only safely theorize that it says, do you know who is, but I don't know where to go from there. This mirror, if you didn't know, is of course a two-way mirror, one in a pair of mirrors that are magically connected. This type of magical artifact allows people to communicate with each other while in different locations. Immediately after seeing Aberforth, it cuts to Albus, so clearly the two are using mirrors to communicate. Next we see Bunty, Newt's assistant, looking at Newt quite firmly and saying, No one can know everything, not even you. Given the absence of Tina Goldstein, a major character in the Fantastic Beasts films from any of the trailers so far, I'm willing to bet that Tina has taken Polyjuice Potion to assume the form of Bunty. I say this because Bunty is quite an unassuming figure, and by taking on her form, it may allow Tina to work more effectively in the shadows. This is also the only reason I can think of that Tina isn't around. Queenie, Tina's sister, is of course on the other side now, which certainly complicates things. Next we hear Dumbledore saying, What you're doing is madness, following by more Grindelwald rallies and Alliance logos. And then, for the first time ever, we see Dumbledore and Grindelwald sitting down face to face with one another. Grindelwald says to Albus, rather ominously, With or without you, I'll burn down their world. Next up, we hear Dumbledore saying, Dangerous times favor dangerous men, as he leads Eulalie Hicks, Jacob, Theseus, and Newt towards the Room of Requirement. Bunty is also there, before the others, I might add, and no Tina, so clearly this is Tina in disguise, right? Dumbledore motions his head towards some kind of rotating ancient pillar or beam which seems to act as a port key. I know that a subscriber commented more information on this pillar, as it's a real thing which pertains to Nepalese culture, but can't seem to remember the details. It does have a name and it is a real thing, maybe just not a port key. If by tea time all of us are still alive, we should consider our efforts a success. Mr. Kowalski, says Dumbledore, reaching for Jacob's hand. Jacob says, my pleasure, which I suppose suggests he's no longer feeling ambivalent towards helping everyone out. Next up, we see a bunch of epic battle sequences between none other than Credence Barebone and Albus Dumbledore. Dumbledore is clearly the more powerful wizard, and we see him deliberating on whether or not he should deliver a final blow to Credence who he's holding on the ground. This scene looks epic. Back to Albus and Grindelwald chatting, Grindelwald drops a massive line, saying, It was you who said we would reshape the world. This suggests that perhaps Grindelwald's plan of restructuring the world for the greater good was actually initially more driven by Albus. Maybe Albus was the more evil of the pair to begin with, only changing his perspective after the death of his sister, which hasn't been touched on yet, I might add. Next we see Dumbledore analyzing what appears to be a kind of pendant. This pendant, however, is certainly no ordinary piece of jewelry, as it actually relates to the blood pact that Dumbledore has with Grindelwald, sealed by blood. With Dumbledore analyzing it quite so closely, it could suggest that he's trying to figure out how to break it, and I think he figures it out, because there's a scene further along in the trailer which strongly suggests it's been broken. More on that in a second. Next we see Newt with Pickett in the forest, battling against Credence, Vinderosier, and perhaps other acolytes. Following this, we see Grindelwald in some kind of a bath, looking annoyed and casting a spell at what appears to be Credence, just before apparating in front of him and choking him. I wonder what this could mean for their relationship. This scene is full of tension. Then we see what appears to be Eulalie and Theseus taking care of business and fighting off bad guys. Then at two minutes, we see something falling into a pit. Not sure exactly what I'm looking at here. Following that, we see a Niffler running at full speed with Pickett on his back, who is holding a wand. I wonder whose wand that could be. What happens next is huge. 
It's Dumbledore and Grindelwald dueling. This is huge for a number of reasons. First of all, it means that the blood pact has been broken. The blood pact that the men shared forbade them from fighting each other. So if they're fighting, it must be over and done with. At least, I think so. I'm really, really excited for this battle sequence. I'm sure it's going to be epic. But I'm also a little bit disappointed, because Dumbledore and Grindelwald dueling likely indicates the end of the Fantastic Beasts series after this film. We know that Grindelwald is eventually defeated by Dumbledore in a duel, and I'm not confident that two more films will follow anymore. Next up, we see a bunch of characters reacting to the duel, including Liu Tao, an Asian wizard and acolyte of Grindelwald's, as well as the never-before-seen Vicencia Santos, played by the actress Maria Fernanda Candido. Banners with Vicencia's name on it have been seen in the teaser's trailers so far, and it appears that she will be running for the post of Supreme Mugwump of the International Confederation of Wizards during the film, a powerful ally for Grindelwald to have. Next up, we see Jacob and more Grindelwald acolytes. Then we see the protagonist battling with what appears to be a blast-ended Scroot of all creatures, Hagrid's favorite. Next up, we see Theseus falling, but it looks like he's safe, as Newt is holding his hand. Then we see more Credence and Dumbledore fighting, but we know how that turns out for Credence. Things are not quite what they appear, Dumbledore says, as he stands with a phoenix flying in front of him, now on his side. Is this Forks? Longer video on this aspect of the trailer to follow. Next, we see Jacob causing all sorts of mayhem with his wand and attacking Queenie. Despite the chaos of the magic he's producing, it appears to be somewhat concentrated, almost as if Jacob is magical, but just untrained. What does this mean? The trailer ends with Jacob staring at Dumbledore, holding a wand and saying, can I keep this? And that's it for now. This is more of just a cursory look at the trailer, but rest assured I'll be breaking down the parts of the trailer that I found most interesting and making some separate, more elaborate videos as well. Stay tuned. Also, what did I miss? Did I get anything wrong? Comment down below. If you enjoy the content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel to support future content. Until next time, remember, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live.